You're very welcome to the National Botanic Gardens Kilmacurra. My name is Seamus O'Brien, I'm the head gardener here at Kilmacurra and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about meadows today and welcome to meadow season. So it's a beautiful warm June day and look behind me, it's this beautiful kaleidoscopic scene of wildflowers, it almost forms a tapestry behind me. So what I'm going to tell you a little bit about is how it started and, and how we maintain it and exactly what's in, in this meadow. So to go back to the start, this is a crocus meadow. So if you travel here in February, it's awash with crocus furnace and the whole place just becomes a carpet of purple blossoms. And it was the fact that there were crocuses here and literally in their millions, that's what determined uh, that it would become a wildflower meadow. So the Acton family who gardened here for close to three centuries, uh, they planted the crocuses here shortly after the house was built in 1697. Um, and we know from the family diaries that they did not do any sort of mowing. There was no mowing until the crocuses had finished their growing season. And that happened uh, in, in July. Um, so the season begins here with the crocuses. And then as the grass grows longer, you get this proliferation of wildflowers. But this is a restoration. It's been a very successful restoration. When I first came here in 2006, it was kept as a standard lawn. There were some crocuses surviving at the bottom of the lawn. So in the following year, 2007, we allowed it up as a meadow. Having seen some of the historic Acton photographs, black and whites, 1930s, and you could actually see wildflowers like pignut in bloom in, in the meadow. And pignut, of course, is an indicator of, of ancient meadows. Uh, in Ireland, we tend to call it fairy potatoes. Its Latin name, name is Conopodium magus and it's an indicator of ancient meadow. It hasn't, an area that hasn't been ploughed in centuries and centuries and centuries. So when we allowed uh, the meadow up that first year, it was very coarse rank grass, quite a lot of almost virtually Yorkshire fog. And it was by the introduction of a small little hemiparasitic hemi annual that changed everything for us. So that plant is this little wildflower. Um, it's, it's an Irish native. So this is Renantis minor. It's either known as yellow rattle or hay rattle. And this was the bane of Irish farmers in the 19th century, because what it does is, it is just hemi or semi-parasitic. So you can see that it has leaves, so it can photosynthesize and form its own food, but it latches its roots onto very vigorous grasses and it can knock the vigor of a hay crop by 50%. So Obviously our, our ancestors who were farming in Ireland in the 19th century, they didn't like it because it could reduce your hay crop. But from growing wildflowers and from a wildflower perspective, that's exactly what you want. So what it did for us over the course of the next couple of years was that it, it killed off all of the very vigorous grasses. So uh, the um, Holcus lanatus, the uh, Yorkshire fog, all of the, those grasses disappeared over the course of time and it left us with very fine grasses that actually allow wildflowers to, to compete with them. So that's just one of the, what we technically call hemiparasites or semi-parasites. The other one that's in the meadow at the moment is um, a lovely little plant called uh, Eyebright, Euphrasia artica. Actually, quite simply, what we did to establish both of these wildflowers, hay rattle and the euphrasia, was that we went out to native sites. So if you're creating a meadow, stick with native Irish, try and get it in your local area. So in the case of the yellow rattle, we went close to Wicklow town and we know an area where it grew wild and with permission we collected seed and established it in the meadows. Um, hay, the uh, York, Yorkshire fog actually, as I say, was knocked out over time. Eyebright came from a little bit further away, it came from County Kildare. And actually, quite simply, all we did was we scattered the old flower heads and seed heads into the meadow. And over the course of the last four years, it has moved quite nicely. So Eyebright also is a hemiparasite. It also uh, manages to reduce the vigor of, of the grasses. And then lastly, the, the last hemiparasite, which doesn't grow in the meadow in front of Kilmacar House, it grows in the meadows as you come in the main estate gates, is called lousewort, and it's Pedicularis sylvatica. It's uh, an Irish native, uh, grows right across the island Island, and it flowers quite early in the year. It's just beginning to flower with us now, or begin to finish flowering with us now. Um, and it's got a sort of a rosy purple flower. It's fairly low growing. And what it does, what lousewort does, is that it also latches its roots onto the roots of vigorous grasses. And you can actually see quite clearly where you get clumps of lousewort growing, that the, the vigor of the grass declines dramatically um, in that area. So, they are the plants that 
began the process of re-establishing this wonderful meadow that you see and over time other plants began to naturally invade in. So one of the, the sort of the, the meadows that I based this work on was the meadow at Great Dexter House in Sussex and uh, that was established by Christopher Lloyd and, and his mother Daisy over the course of the 20th century and at that time one of the things that you saw quite a lot in that meadow was red clover Trifolium pretense. I always sort of bemoan the fact that there was no red clover in this meadow but you've got to be patient. Over time it naturally began to invade its, its way back in um, and what's lovely to watch is the how the meadow naturally manages itself over time. Yarrow began to proliferate, I began to worry that it was taking over, but then you get this cascade effect where the yarrow declined, self-seeded elsewhere, so nature has a way of rebalancing. One of the real joys, of course, in this meadow is just the sheer number of orchids that you see in, in the meadow. Here, and particularly the meadows uh, inside the estate gates. So the meadow inside the estate gates, for example, if you visit now and over the course of the next 10 days, we can guarantee that you'll see about five and a half thousand heat spotted orchids in bloom down there. So that's um, an orchid that's normally found on acidic soils. It's Dactyloliza maculata subspecies ericatorum. Um, and these are the sort of plants that we look back very nostalgically at. So as a child growing up in West Wicklow, I remember at the end of the farm at home, walking down to the bog and you saw wild orchids, native Irish orchids growing in it. The land was improved. And when farmers say improve for lovers of wildflowers, it means that it's ruined, that suddenly these wildflowers can no longer uh, use that as a habitat. Um, so that particular orchid um, in 2008, the lower meadow we allowed up uh, following this meadow, and about 300 orchids appeared. So you can be very surprised sometimes with what can happen. So those orchids obviously had withstood decades of mowing. About 300 orchids appeared in 2008, and over the course of the last sort of 13, 14 years, they have self seeded in thousands. And again, something that our visitors feel very nostalgic about um, to see all of these um, wildflowers reappearing um, again and to see the orchids reappearing uh, in, in masses. So you can see they're just behind me here. So this is just one example of this lovely heat spotted orchid. We've got common spotted orchids and actually at the top of this meadow we've got an ex situ population of O'Kelly's orchid. So that's Dactyloliza O'Kellii. The only place it grows in Ireland is in uh, the, the west, so in counties Clare and Galway on the Burn. It's named for Dr. P.B. O'Kelly from who lived on the Burn and made a, a, a living from selling plants from the Burn. It's the 19th century, you wouldn't be allowed to do that today. Um, but it is one of these truly Irish native orchids and happily it's self seeding up the top end of, of the meadow. So this meadow, for the amount of effort that's put into it, gives us enormous value for money. Um, as I said, it starts with the crocuses in February. There's, there's not a day right up until September when we mow that there isn't colour in this meadow. It begins with the crocuses in February and then we get sheets of hoop petticoat daffodils that, that, that carry the season forward. So that's Narcissus bulbicodium uh, far conspicuous. And then suddenly it goes into this time of year where you get sheets of, um, of meadow buttercup uh, and camassias. Now it's got into that lovely time of where you've got oxide daisies, Leucanthemum uh, vulgare, this huge um, uh, oxide daisy. Um, and that continues right through the, the summer. So um, the oxide daisies will continue on. And even when we cut the meadows in September, we have sheets of devil spit scabies, Succesia pretensis, that's ran its way right through the meadow. And it is a shame, well, we do have to cut at that time of year, but at that stage, the meadows are just absolutely purple with devil spit scabies. And it's what it attracts as well. You know, it's the, the, the number of pollinators, if you stand here, the amount of bumblebees, of moths, of, of, of wasps, of hoverflies, there's just a huge population. So it is an oasis um, in, in the middle of modern agriculture. What we like to point out, by the way, is that this is biodiversity. So there's 148 species 
species of wildflowers on the last count and that's including native Irish grasses as well. So this is sheer biodiversity you're looking at in here and then when you look out down over this lovely view towards the Wicklow Mountains and you look into the field next door that's a green desert because of mag modern agricultural processes and 10 10 20 it means that there's probably about 10 species of, of, of wildflowers uh, if that much living in there. Uh, so this is almost like a little Noah's Ark of, of wildflowers growing uh, in here. Um, so th our management system is that um, we will allow the wildflowers up over the course of the summer. We'll do a little bit of editing so if there's plants like nettles and tussles and hogweed will come in and we'll dig those out just to stop them running through so there is a small bit of editing needed and then once it comes to the end of um, the season and that's the first week of September we cut the meadows and at that stage um, the orchids have had a chance to set seed so if you don't have orchids in your meadow in Ireland you can cut in July always actually allow of course the um, the cuttings or the, you know, the hay that comes off the meadow uh, to rest for a couple of days. That allows this, the remaining seed to, to fall out, but not just that as well, you need to allow all of the insects to escape from the meadow area as well. And that's really, really, really critical. You don't want to create this, this lovely home for, uh, for insects and other animals um, and then just build them up. So um, we will uh, cut on the first day of the first week of September and then by midweek we've taken that up, we've bailed it, we put it into a compost tape, we allow it to compost back down and we can put that back out onto the garden again. So it's a very, very, very sustainable way of gardening and um, not just that, prior to establishing this meadow, we would have had somebody out here mowing at least once a week, burning fossil fuels that have come halfway around the world to Ireland. So this is the way to garden. It's much, much prettier. So it's a perfect time of year to come see our meadows. Um, there's, our meadows are located in three different locations. So we've got the orchid meadow just inside the estate gates. The, the meadow to the front of the house is probably the most colourful and I'm standing at the moment on the 18th century Pond Vista. So all these meadows have something di different to offer. This is certainly my favourite way to garden. It's something that I'm passionate about. I think if, if I was to take any section of Kilmacara to that desert island with me, it would be our meadows that I would bring with me. So again, for visitors, it's a perfect opportunity to come see and to learn uh, how we do it and how we manage it. Um, and if you, if you do come visit, we have daily guided tours that actually will walk you through the meadow area. So I do encourage you to come visit. It's a lovely time of year. Um, the meadows will sing for the next several months, but now is peak season for our meadows. So please do come visit us here at the National Botanic Gardens, Kilmacara.